Have you ever tried a new art supply and it literally blew your mind like in the best way imaginable? Well, that happened to me recently and I'm gonna share the whole adventure with you. Izara watercolors are made in Belgium by a color woman. The term color man is typically used to describe someone who makes paints out of pigment but these paints are made by a color woman indeed. Isabel Roloff was born into a family of artists and color men, and she inherited their passion and expertise for creating color. So over the last few years, a bunch of you have mentioned this brand of paints, and last year at some point, I finally decided to pick out a few colors and give them a try. And honestly, they've been sitting in my studio for a while. I mean, you know, I have that whole video about like what type of procrastinator are you creatively, and I'm definitely a collector but I finally pulled these beauties out and oh my goodness let's get into it these paints acted in a way I could never have dreamed and so I've arranged this video in a really unique way you definitely want to stick around I'm gonna paint first and then swatch and there's a really good reason for that so like I said stick around watch to the end because it's it's just crazy I can't get over it Friends, I feel like I'm using all the brushes today. I'm using the samples from my Freedom From Fear brush collection. So a bunch of different daggers. We've got a filbert. We've got a very large round. We've got a larger cat's tongue. So we're gonna have lots of fun. And then of course the Art For Joy Sake brush collection and even my new travel brush. It's all gonna come out. Yeah, at least I think it is. Here's a look at my tubes. I just love these little mini tubes. <laughs> Mini's not the right word, but they're just a different shape and they just have this quaint kind of feel and I don't know. I think I'm probably the only person in the world that could like gush and crush over the look of a paint tube, but I'm okay with it. When I first started this video, I was convinced I was going to, of course, create a new palette, vintage tin, half pan, the whole nine, you know the drill. I've done quite a few videos on this channel of how to do just that. And as I'm looking through these little tins, I found one that I love so much that would fit perfectly. But then I got to thinking, so many of you have asked me the question of like, why put the paint in a half pan instead of just using it directly from the tubes? And so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to show you uh, what happens when you work directly from the tube. So I decided to go ahead and add these to one of my ceramic palettes. I'm gonna link all of the resources below. This one is available on christyrice.com. And I'm gonna go ahead and use these paints right away before they've cured and kind of show you how things feel. And it's a little crazier when you're working directly from the tube, but stick around. Cleaning out this palette, I've used this with so many different things, inks and of course watercolor, even gouache and gesso, so it's got some residual stuff going on in there. And you might be wondering, well, you're gonna add the paint to these little wells, aren't they going to eventually dry or cure? And yes, they absolutely will. And honestly, that's my preferred way of working, meaning I like to put paints in some type of container, well, half pan, whatever it may be, let them cure and then re-wet them, reconstitute them to begin painting. But today is a little experiment for you. And absolutely, this palette will not be a travel friendly palette. This is an at home, in studio, on the painting table forever type of palette. First up, we have Eternal Summit. I love the names of these colors, by the way. Next up is Izaro Gray Light. Beige Titanium, Izaro Yellow Light, Izaro Yellow Deep, Izaro Orange, Izaro Pyrrole Red, Izaro Rose, Izaro Mauve, Izaro Purple Deep. This is a new one for me, so be kind. Danthrene Blue, Izaro Green Light, and Chartreuse Yellow. As for the style of painting I'm gonna work on today, I'm actually taking my cues from an artist I follow on Instagram, Rosalie Gwen Papery. Oh my goodness, the artist's name is actually Kara, I believe. And I've just fallen in love, and honestly, I've been following her for years. Her brush strokes just feel so incredibly intentional, and of course, the floral gets me every time. And just this romantic, ethereal, she definitely has like a mixed media vibe, which y'all know I love. And so I 
wanted to learn from her today a little bit, and so I'm gonna give it a go. I'm using Arches Cold Press watercolor paper from the block today. So I'm starting with a colorful ground, and I already think I'm gonna do two of these floral compositions side by side. So I'm starting with that creamy blue and the grays, and I'm just gonna create kind of a loose rectangle shape here, leaving space on the left-hand side for another later on. And while I'm letting the first rectangle dry, I'm gonna get started on the second. I'm gonna go down here and use this chartreuse green. And I knew, actually, it's called chartreuse yellow, and I was so confused with this color originally it's probably why i bought it because it intrigued me because it's definitely more of an olive green mixing in some of that purple and i want to go really really moody here and i'm using my three quarter inch flat wash brush so i can get good coverage quickly and i also kind of want those like romantic kind of brushy kind of structured strokes gosh does that make sense that i kind of see in some of uh, kara's painting work I think what's most intriguing about her work and what I want to kind of figure out for myself, and remember friends, this isn't to copy. This isn't what I'm going to turn my style into. This is just me doing an exercise and being open to learning from someone else. But anyway, what I love about her work is that it is mixed media. She uses a lot of watercolor, but her paintings almost feel like oil paintings. And I think that's so curious and I wonder if I can make that happen. We'll see. I love that icy blue so much. I'm bringing it into the bottom here along with a little bit of grays and back to the chartreuse. This is gonna be an interesting one because remember, friends, I'm gonna go back over top of these rectangles with color and this is a dark rectangle, so we'll see what I've gotten myself into. All right, you wanna get those all dry, friends. Just really let those dry out for a time because when you start on the next layer, I really feel like them being dry underneath is super important. Especially on the left-hand side rectangle because I need good paint coverage that doesn't diffuse so it'll pop against those darker background colors. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to kind of examine or explain what happens when you work straight from a fresh tube of paint versus re-wetting a cured pan or well of paint. And you can kind of already see what happens. You potentially and easily use a lot more paint a lot quicker. So it's just something to consider that you're gonna have that tendency to pull up a lot more paint a lot easier when you're working directly from the tube. Now I'm getting right into it here and I love these orange colors. So I'm going in with my number six Filbert. That is the Freedom From Fear brush collection, friends. This is just my sample brush. It is a hot mess, but I've been using it for over a year now and I adore a Filbert. It gives you these glorious, just springy strokes that feel full, but still wispy as you lift up. Oh, I just love it. Something that I remembered while painting these daisies, side view, I've got a three quarter view and almost a full front view. Something that Colby Bloom mentioned to me. And she, and I'm paraphrasing here, and I'm gonna link our whole series with Colby below because it was just phenomenal. She mentioned about like using your brush and how she felt like when she first started painting, and remember I'm paraphrasing, that she had to like know exactly what to do with her brush and how to make a stroke. But what she realized is that you really just need to scribble that brush around and move it around and tap, tap and wiggle, wiggle and scrub and let it kind of dance across the page. And that's when some of the most exciting strokes happen. And that really is the truth, especially with this style of painting, where the brush strokes, you're not gonna have layers and layers and layers of brush strokes. I mean, you're gonna have layers, but not like, you know, Christy Rice layers, like 65 layers, and then maybe I call it done. No, you're gonna have maybe three or four layers. And so these strokes need to be breathy and full of life and airy and intentional because there aren't as many. 
And some could argue that even when you have more and more and more layers, you need to be intentional as well. And I would probably agree, but you have a lot more time to correct and edit and fix and fuss when you're adding a lot more layers, unlike this painting style. So when I was painting these leaves and these petals, I was thinking about the angle that I wanted them to be at. So a petal that was coming towards me, it was gonna be shorter and kind of fatter. And I was also just thinking about keeping my hand light and wiggling and bouncing and at the same time being intentional with how I laid down the color and really, really using my brush to its fullest potential. And that's where brush drills come in handy and that's something I'll link below, of course. I've been doing a lot of talking, so I'm going to go ahead, let you watch this painting kind of develop, and I want you to just take notice of the velvetiness of this paint, how rich and uh, slightly creamy it is, and oof, it's just good. I'm going to stop, take a look, have fun, and watch what unfolds. in with this dark mixture and this could be if you're using any palette that you have at home just a mixture of uh, quite a few different colors reds greens purples a little bit of blue and you're gonna get this rich 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 purpley color and I'm going in with my larger round this is a number 12 round and I'm adding some leafy kind of vine moments here in the bottom left corner and this color is it is like juicy on dry friends it is thick and it's almost syrupy on purpose. And that is so easy to accomplish when you're working straight out of the tube. But I love the contrast that this is adding. So this is kind of like my second layer to this particular composition. And what I'm thinking right now is, Christy, keep it together. This is already feeling very effortless and very breezy, easy, beautiful, and I don't wanna screw it up. So I'm not gonna keep going too much longer. What I notice when I look at Kara's work is that there is a strong contrast between really intense opaque strokes and then super light and sheer strokes. So I'm thinking of that as well as I'm moving along. Now I'm heading in and just adding that third layer, some signature linear detail strokes that I love to do so much. I'm just mixing together the red, oranges, that kind of vibe. And yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna let you watch. Cleaning up the palette a little bit. Y'all know this is something I don't do a lot, but the mixing space here is a little bit limited and I am going pretty light right now. So I need that somewhat clean space to do just that. So this particular panel is gonna be a wild ride. I'm going in with the purple and that icy blue to get kind of a bright pastel of sorts. And we're gonna start, I'm just gonna create a loose kind of loosely um, inspired dahlia flower. And remember, get it, just keep that brush bouncing. Just tap and turn and change the angle and brush and turn and, and just see 
where the strokes take you. Just, just keep Colby's recommendation in mind. And I mix that purple and I'm definitely gonna use it, but I feel like I wanna start with something lighter. And I'll tell you what, friends, if you haven't noticed, that icy blue is absolutely fantastic. You know I'm a fan of watercolors that kind of hover on the line between watercolor and gouache, and this one does it beautifully. It's so exciting. So let's get into it. I'm using the three quarter inch dagger, and I'm dabbing, scrubbing. I'm going with downstrokes, upstrokes, and I'm working around, you guessed it, an invisible center. And this flower is definitely almost a full on top down view. I'm going a little easy on myself because there's some tricky challenges ahead in this composition that I know of. So I'm going with a flower view that I'm super duper comfortable with. And I'm definitely a little more heavy handed with this paint because I'm trying to get that contrast over top of the darker background. Now heading in with that magical purple and it is so, so fun. But notice, even though the application of this particular section with the paint is definitely more opaque, you can still see through and you're still getting that watercoloriness. What I am starting to notice, and this is where like the shock value that I mentioned earlier in this video is coming into play. This piece is starting to feel like an oil painting. And I haven't painted with oil in years, but there's a certain, obviously, a texture. There's the opacity factor with oil. I mean, you can get really sheer layers with oil, but it has this velvetiness. This paint is just that. It's velvety, at least the experience I've had with it so far. Now notice, I did not swatch this palette of colors. But I'm definitely feeling like I want to now because in my brain I'm thinking, these colors seem really moody and like Renaissance-like. I thought they were gonna be a lot brighter. And so maybe I need to go ahead and swatch this. But for now, I'm just working in some really dark leaves. Again, that like dark muddy purple and then some of that olive green applied really like juicy on dry. And if you're curious, like Chrissy, what are you talking about juicy on dry? I have a fantastic video. I'm gonna link it below about water control and you'll learn all about all the things juicy on dry. I'm also noticing that one of these paints is a shimmer and you know me I'm not a big fan of shimmer but I don't know it's like growing on me there's a little area there in kind of the middle section off to the left a little bit that's like shimmery and I don't know maybe that's adding to the velvetiness I don't know friends I'm gonna let you watch I'm gonna shut up and uh, let's see where this goes. love that vibrant pink color, pinkish red. I forget the name of it right now. You know how I am. And I'm going in with, of course, that icy blue and I am making some berries. These are like, in my brain, like winter berries. I'm really enjoying letting just a hint of some of the leaves kind of extend off the page. I did that in the first composition as well. And it really is fantastic for composition. It, it gives your eye somewhere to go, but without being too rigid. 
I also need to just make a point to show you the gorgeous granulation that is happening with that chartreuse in the background and the purples. Oh my gosh, the granulation. So good, so good, so good. It's where the pigments are kind of separating from one another and create a ton, a ton of texture. So, so lovely. These paints are phenomenal. They are a mystery. They clearly are made by someone who absolutely is obsessed with pigment and their personalities. And this is the kind of paint that I adore. Honestly, when I created my own palette, I, I too am obsessed with all the personalities that watercolor has to offer. It is not a one trick pony visually. And this paint woman, she knows that in her soul and I feel it with every brush stroke. Now it's time to swatch these colors. Y'all know I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an outlier. I do things backwards, upside down and sideways when it comes to watercolor and probably everything in life. But I really needed to see the true clean character of each of these colors because what I suspected is actually what is true. These aren't muddy colors. I mean, definitely some of these colors are more opaque, some are semi-opaque, but the vast majority of them, especially uh, when they're not in mass tone, meaning full coverage, are extremely sheer. But because of the particular way that they've been made, and I don't know all the science behind this particular paint maker, and honestly, they're probably not gonna tell us because it's a beautiful secret but there is some gorgeous stuff happening when you wash out these colors with clean water. They are extremely sheer, sheer down beautifully, and that is something I love. Again, something I did or tried to do in my own palette design. Look at that violet color in mass tone. Gorgeous, 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 and it just washes down beautifully. You're not getting milkiness. You're not getting grit. You're not getting um, chalkiness you're getting a gorgeous classic sheer watercolor. Look at this. If I had swatched this first, I don't think my paintings would have come to the end that they did. Their luscious creaminess kind of, I'm just, I've got like Rubens vibes and oh my gosh, I'm so excited about how those paintings turned out and I can't wait to explore some more. But I feel like if I had swatched first, I would have used the paints differently. Does that make sense? So sometimes turning your process upside down, maybe you do typically swatch first. I mean, most people do, come on, let's be real. It kind of guides you in a way and boxes you in a little bit. So I use these paints in a way that was very much emotion led and absolutely not knowledge led. And it put me on a beautiful path. I think I can say confidently that these pigments are so full of personality because of the way they vary from mass tone or full coverage down to the sheer wash. So much is happening between, you know, those two opposites. The, the in-between is so magical. And then of course, the granulation in some of these, that chartreuse at the end granulates like it's its job. And uh, oh my gosh, this icy blue, friends, it's lovely. In mass tone, it feels like wash, but not quite as strong. And then it shears out to this just lovely kind of steamy, summery sky kind of vibe and oof, I love it so much. So friends, I gotta say, you know, maybe next time you grab a new set of paints, maybe don't swatch them first and paint first and experience them in use and then see where that takes you and then swatch them and see what surprises may come because this palette blew my mind and shook me in a way um, that I haven't been shook in a while and I think that's so fun. Isn't that why we're here? Now I wanna go paint using these pigments in this kind of bright, bold, sheer way instead of the kind of, you know, creamy Renaissance oil paint style way that I did. So, oof, so good. Now, all that said, I just feel the need to go back to this piece here, friends, on the left and add some more linear detail and really just punch out the opaque nature of these paints and go all in with the opaque nature, even knowing what I know now about the colors and the swatching and all the things. 
I was super curious to see if that icy blue would actually give me the coverage that I love for linear detail, something similar to when I use gesso. And it actually does uh, with this liner brush. So good, so good. I'm really excited about it. But also then thinking back to um, Rosalie Gwen Papery and kind of her effortless strokes, reminding myself not to get too crazy and too involved and too persnickety with the details. I literally feel like this session has just been a journey into like my creative consciousness because I feel like I'm all over the place. But if you're having fun just the same and you feel like you've had a few moments where you're like, hmm, I didn't actually ever think about it that way. Um, go ahead and give this video a boop, friends. That's a like, I'd really appreciate it. And it definitely helps out my channel. Now friends, you might already have some paint in your collection that you can mess around with in this way or maybe you have a new palette you received it recently and you've never tried it yet i would encourage you to go ahead and paint with it first avoid the urge to swatch uh, because our swatching can like i said earlier can really kind of point us in one direction and it's so much more fun to have so many other directions to explore. All right, friends, I have to ask which of these paintings is your favorite and why? Let me know in comments. Is it the one on the right hand side or the left? I, I can't decide. If you, if you made me decide, it would probably be the darker one on the left, but can't wait to hear what you think. And if you're curious about the nature and personality of watercolor, this video next is going to be the one for you. I'm reviewing a bunch of mid-range Amazon palettes and talking about all the different personalities of watercolor and how they represent and stand up to one another. Go ahead, check it out, and happy painting.